And Damien is here now with our very first look at sports. And a very good evening to Lisa. Of course, we follow all the prospects of the Barbadian athletes on the international scene. And Barbadian cyclist Amber Joseph, well, she avoided a major collision to finish a creditable seventh place in the finals of the women's scratch race at the Track Cycling World Championships in Poland yesterday. And the 19-year-old Joseph, who is based in England, was mid-pack in the closing stages of the 40-lap event when 10 riders collided. In the end, Britain's Eleanor Barker held off Christian Weld of the Netherlands to claim the first gold medal for her country at the event. Here's a look now at the climax of that race. World title is at stake here. Lydia Gurley off island again looks behind. Still almost the length of the house race. Uh, so Julian Dore and uh, Kirsten Weil still at the head of the race. Last year's world champion. Last year's silver medalist. And uh, the uh, Czech Republic have also got Jamila Machikova in the middle of that group as well. As we begin to uh, build up towards the finish here, the Dutch are already anticipating Kirsten Weil is going to come through. Two laps to go. Could it be any more exciting on the front row? Now it is uh, Weil and Dora, but look out for the attack coming over the top. And a last minute attacking move here as he comes towards, oh, big crash has fell the majority of the field, but at the front with a lap to go, the rider who has grabbed the lead position is Eleanor Barker of Great Britain. Barker, the world point race champion from a couple of years ago, is taking on Kirsten Wilde for the world title. Eleanor Barker and Kirsten Wilde coming into the finish track. Laurie both on in third place, around here, Julian Thorpe, but on the line, first across the line, and the world champion, well, what an incredible ride it was from Eleanor Barker. She never appeared at the front of the race until the time it absolutely mattered. Well, here you can see the attack developing from Barker as that huge crash felled the uh, bunch there. And look at, from another angle as Barker made a move around the outside. She knew that Wilde was on the favourite. The first rider to go down in that uh, crash was uh, Amelie Diedrichsen of the, of the uh, Danish team, the uh, former World Road Race champion. Well, the uh, majority of the riders involved in that crash, I am pleased to report, are uh, back on their feet. We'll see that uh, medal ceremony later. There is the confirmation of that result for you. In the top ten places. Cricket news now. Barbados Pride were undone by fellow countryman Raymond Reefer on day one of their CWI four-day match against Ghana Jaguars at Providence today. Reefer took 5 for 20 as the Pride were dismissed for just 76 in their first innings after deciding to bat first. Chaim Holder top scored with 22. Well, the Jags at stumps were 162 for 7. Jonathan Carter so far taking 3 for 45. In the other games at Windsor Park in Dominica, Trinidad and Tobago Red Force are 254 for 6 against the Windward Volcanoes. Well, at Sabina Park in Jamaica, the Leeward Hurricanes 210 if Nikita Miller taking 7 for 50, Jamaica Scorpions in reply are 77 for 2. Well, after yesterday's defeat in the fourth one international against England in Grenada, the equation is simple. The West Indies must win the fifth one international against England to square the series at two all. It sounds great on paper, but as you know, the proof is in the pudding. So far, the West Indies have matched the number one ranked team, England, in the batting department, pound for pound. The, the grey area, however, is in the bowling. There's absolutely no question in my mind from watching this limited over series that our spin bowling coach, Mushtaq Ahmed, has had little impact on Devendra Bishu and Ashley Nurse. They have combined for two wickets in the series and conceded a whopping 335 runs. In his defence, Nurse has made up for the struggles with the ball and in the field with his batting. Producing late cameos, 25 not off does 8, deliveries in the first match, and a supportive 13 from 16 to ensure Shimron Hetmeyer reached his century in the second ODI, also in Bridgetown. Then in the fourth match, he hit 43 off 41. Of note, off-break bowlers on both sides have struggled. Moin Ali is wicketless so far in the series and has conceded 167 runs. However, when comparing England leg spinner Adil Rashid to Bishu, you can see by the numbers that Bishu has struggled badly. Rashid has produced a mixed bag, utilizing the googly and at times the top spinner to try and outfox the Windies batsmen. It has yielded him nine wickets so far, with five of those coming in crunch time in the fourth match. Five for 85. 
at a time when the Wendy's looked on course to overhaul a mammoth 419 set by England. Meantime, Carlos Baffet was under pressure heading into the matches in Grenada. He had scores of just 3 and 13 in the first two games at Kensington. And he took just one wicket. And of course, you can understand why people were chomping at the bit to axe him from the squad. 32 ODIs, 29 innings, and an average of just 14.40 with the bat. Not really encouraging. But his even 50 off 36, the highest score of his ODI career, put the Windies on the brink before his untimely departure. If there are changes to be made for the fifth ODI, and I can only think of one, our rounder Andre Russell in place of Bishu. Once fully fit, Dre Russ will add another dimension to the Windies lineup in both the bowling and late order hitting. Special thanks to Chris Gill, a.k.a. the world boss, for proving that age is just a number. At 39 years old, he remains the most destructive batsman in the game. Over 10,000 ODI runs, inclusive of 1,088 fours and 305 sixes across 282 innings. Say no more. If England can't dismiss him cheaply, trust me, they will pay the price. All in all, the Windies must be given full credit for their performances against England in both the Tests and now One Day Series. And if they can tick all the boxes on Saturday, and there's no doubt the series will end level at two games apiece. Of course, that is my take. On the other hand, one fan, Henderson Hines, believes that the Windies must adopt a more killer instinct. It's okay to compete, which we did, but if we want to win and be world beaters again, we have to capture those defining moments that are going to, that are going to make you win a game. All right? But basically, the balance of the team wasn't bad. Um, they still, still some worry with Bishu, um, and maybe, maybe you can send Nurse too. But I guess these fellows will come into their own because the wicket was a good wicket, and sometimes the, 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 the margin for error is very slim. So sometimes as bowlers, you miss, you miss sometimes, you miss the mark sometimes. But generally, I'm very proud of how the guys are playing. Um, what, what we can look to do in terms of depth, obviously we need to, to, to get the fellas coming behind these to be consistent too because injury to any of these players, then the level of performance will drop again. And, and that's very important. We need to sustain a certain level of, of performance from all the players. Well, Set E have retained their track and field title at Grand Islands Memorial competing at the National Stadium. Set E were over 100 points clear of second place Set B with 911.5 to 804. They were followed by Set C, D and A respectively. The victor Lodora was Raziel Holligan of Set B with 60 points while the victories were Cheyenne Phillips of Set E with 51. CBC Sean Green has the highlights. Under 13 girls, 400 meters will open my highlight reel. Just five in this encounter. Samika Grays of set C or purple, alongside housemate Ginny Ford. Michaelia Choutenham of set B or blue. Diana Wood also of B. And Aaliyah Wilkinson of C for Crawford of green. Now Ford would own this event, moving ahead all alone. And there's no catching her. Coming home about now, leaving the other two from B or Bearhouse to fight for a second. Now to the junior boys again, five in this event. Another slow start, like most. And let's see where the running will be emerging from. This is the center of the track. That looks like Isaiah Springer of set B. Separating himself from the pack and pulling ahead. And he will run away with this event with ease. Race number three on the 15 girls, 400 meters, six athletes in this one, three of them alone from Green. So Crawford House is in with a good chance at winning. And these three up front, all from Greenhouse, but can they hold on? Katira Mayhew certainly can. No one else would even come close as she storms home, putting everything into her stride, crossing the line first, seconds ahead of postmate Rihanna Wilkinson. 
Under 15 boys, 400 meters on the line, five in this one. So that set these Jelani best, living it to his name indeed. Coming home ahead of the pack, simply the best in this event, leaving the others in his wake. And that's right, Jelani, show them the back of the shirt. All eyes on the track for the under 17 girls, Shania Straker of set E in this one, Khadija Appleweight of C, the one to watch in green, along with Kayla Bascom and Kishana Holder Joseph in this one as well, as Nia Addison of Blue. And this one would go to green, Appleweight, I mean, Khadija Appleweight cruising home ahead of a smiling Nia Addison and she's probably happy to be second and why not collecting some points for Bayer a two-man event in the under 17 and Kevin Byron of blue he's in lane number two Rashad Williams in the white shirt with the red headband in five and just a stroll in the park really for Williams no one to run against so just a matter of collecting some points for Red House and that he does under 20 girls event now featuring Dan Lisha Seal a slow and painstaking race for the girls very slow pace but someone must be the fastest and that honor would go to Seal of purple or E. No problems for her coming home without any company whatsoever. And now the under 20 boys, five runners in this one. And it was the strong finish of Raziel Holligan in blue who would take this event. 100 meters, under 13 girls, focus your attention on the pint-sized girl in the blue with the blue headgear. That's Cheltenham who earlier ran the 400 meters while she's back for the 100 meter dash, winning ahead of the pack. The boys race was more competitive, especially between blue and red, Isaiah Springer in the blue, and uh, Shama Fedrick of set A, Red House, who will it be? Springer getting home in 14.82. Under 15 boys, earlier we saw the best of Jalan Best in the 400, he's running in lane number four in yellow here, and he to return to slam the field, beating Jaden Bruce of set C to finish in 13.21 seconds. Under 17 girls on the go, and watch that young lady in lane number five, her name is Cheyenne Catlin, running for purple set E, wearing the blue cast, cast a slow spell on her competitors, clocking a time of 12.84 seconds. That's a good time. Rashad Williams in the white, who won the two-man race in the 400 meters, had things a bit tougher in the 100s, having to fight off a fast finishing. Dyer McCulling in the red top and multicolored trunks, and Williams barely held on to win in 12.43. This is Leah Thorne Carrington with her friends uh, predicting the outcome of the 100 meter under 20 girls, but let's see how the race would shape up. Five from Purple House alone against one from Set D in the white, but the honors in this event would go to set E's Cheyenne Phillips. And the under 20 boys event really came down to two guys Gabriel Clark of set E in purple and Raziel Holligan in blue in set B. Holligan had won the 400 meters earlier and Clark was here to test it now. Holligan losing the shoe and the race. Clark winning in 12.13 seconds. Sean Green, CBC Sports. Well, thanks, uh, Sean. We're going to end sports night with this one. Record breaker Roland Curtin Brown of Lestevon was all smiles after receiving the most outstanding field events challenge shield at the end of the recent Joseph Payne Memorial Athletics Classic held at the National Stadium. Well, she broke the under 20 girls javelin record of 24.22 meters held by Marisha Thorpe of St. George Secondary School with a new mark of 35.43 meters. On hand to present the shield was Margaret Hoyt sales manager of sponsors MQI, Colleen King, Roland's grandmother, and chairperson of the Joseph Payne Memorial Athletics Classic, Charles Walcott. Well, that's it for sports, Lisa. I want to let you know as well, I'm going to plan a 100-meter event for the newsroom. Are you interested in running the 100, Lisa? Give me the day and time, and I'll be there, best man. Oh, sounds like a big sprint to you. Do you believe me? Do you believe me, though? Not a chance. Exactly. Not you chance. know me well. Thank you so much.